Welcome back friends. We have just talked about uh, the production and biosynthesis of acetic acid or vinegar. Now in this video I will be talking about the biosynthesis of as, uh, lactic acid. Now both of them are acidic, acetic acid as well as lactic acid but the productivity or the biosynthesis for the production of acetic acid is different than the production of lactic acid because the acetic acid production requires oxidation because the stages or biochemical reactions that we are going to see in acetic acid is oxygenic but the process of production of lactic acid is anoxic that means it is not requiring any oxygen actually oxygen can spoil the production of lactic acid because normally bacteria when oxygen is present won't grow to the pathway to produce lactic acid it usually pro proves or process through glycolysis Krebs cycle and generation of energy but when uh, oxygen is not present in only those cases bacteria chooses the lactic acid pathway to produce lactic acid but we don't want them to supply oxygen so that the process of Krebs cycle and energy generation is halted and the lactic acid generation is increased. That's the important task. And here the substrate in this case is glucose because uh, it's simple process of conversion of glucose into lactic, lactic acid. The substrate here it is glucose. Usually the glucose taken as 12-15% glucose is taken and the product in this case will be let me take another color. The product here will be lactic acid. And the bacteria that we choose here, lactic acid fermenting bacteria. And bacteria is lactobacillus type, like lactobacillus. But not all the species of lactobacillus, especially lactobacillus bulgaricus or lactobacillus delbrucki. Lactobacillus bulgaricus or lactobacillus delbrucki. I, I think the spelling is uh, fine anyways. So Lactobacillus bulgaricus or Lactobacillus delbrucki are the uh, species of lacto lactic acid fermenting bacteria that are used to convert glucose into lactic acid by the anoxic or anaerobic pathway. So for this process to occur we do not supply any oxygen. So the condition that we maintain is fully anaerobic or anoxic in nature. Okay, now let's uh, talk about a little bit about uh, the biochemistry of that. The biochemistry for this is simply, so let me write, the biochemistry is we are having glucose here and the glucose is converted into glucose 1-phosphate. This glucose 1-phosphate is converted then into glucose 1,6-bisphosphate. Okay, and from this and then finally it will be converted into pyruvates. I'm not right. For the sequential stages, I'm not going to write the sequential stages, but finally it will convert into pyruvate. Then the pyruvate will be converted into lactic acid. Normally what happens when they convert into pyruvate via the glycolysis? So the stage of glycolysis begins from at glucose and then finally ends it pyruvate. Okay, now what happens in, so this is the whole process of glycolysis, this is a section, right? So it just passed through the glycolysis and after the glycolysis, is it never enters in Krebs cycle. Instead, it will go for lactic acid fermentation pathway and that is simply conversion of pyruvate into the lactic acid, not having any more for the stage. Now, this conversion of pyruvate to lactic acid, so this is our product in this case. Now for this first stage from glucose to glucose 1 phosphate, a phosphate is added and then glucose 1 6 bisphosphate, another phosphate is added and at this stage we require NAD and NAD is converted into NADH plus H plus. Now this NADH which is present here, when it turns into the pyruvate into the lactic acid, the lactic acid fermentation pathway, this NADH is required by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex so the NADH is required and then it will be converting it into the NAD so it's a pyruvate dehydrogenase it will convert it into the NAD okay and then pyruvate is converted into lactic acid so it's kind of cyclic but the lactic acid is generated via this kind of pathway now remind you no oxygen is there so no room for oxygen is there so there shouldn't be any oxygen 
so oxygen is blocked right so we need some conditions we need to maintain one is no oxygen so anoxic fermentation second thing is that the fermentation usually keep carried out for 72 hours the temperature maintained 45 to 50 degrees celsius temperature for the conversion of glucose into the lactic acid now I remind you the substrate we take is not only glucose but also ammonium hydrogen phosphate is added as well as we add some vitamin B which is also required which is acting as a cofactor for this process because the enzyme here uh, take vitamin B as a cofactor for the conversion and then the pH in this case maintained acidic a little bit acidic like 5.5 to 6.5 pH and to maintain this pH at this 5.5 to 6.5 range because you mind you when the lactic acid is produced this is very much acidic this is very acidic so we need to brought it down to a less acid like 5.5 to 6.5 but the lactic acid is less lesser acidic uh, much more acidic than this particular pH to, to convert to block this particular step or to block this particular pathway what we need to do we need to in this case we need to add some alkaline agent and the alkaline agent in this case we add is CaCOC or calcium carbonate which regulates this pH regulates the pH to finally maintain the pH up to 5.5 to 6.5 range okay so this in a sense is the biochemistry and for this process you mind do simple fermentation tank is used anaerobic fermentation tank is used the process should not be continuous it usually used via batch processes once the product finishing the production of lactic acid we just stop the reaction take out the lactic acid and take it for the further use okay and we need to keep uh, making this these important parameters fixed for this beneficial conversion rest of the process is fine another important thing for choosing the inoculum like lactobacillus bulgaricus or delbrucki whatever usually there are two types of lactic acid fermenting bacteria one type is called heterofermentative another type is called homofermentative now heterofermentative lactic acid bacteria can produce uh, lactic acid along with that it, it can produce many more things some unwanted product we don't want them in our uh, industrial product so we must exclude those heterofermentative bacteria and choose some homofermentative bacteria like some of them like lactobacillus bulgaricus or delbrucki they are homofermentative lactic acid fermenters they will only produce lactic acid not any other things and again if you use some submerged process for that of this fermentation after the fermentation we must clarify it we must purify it we must uh, just escape or take it out from other bacterial contaminations we just filter it clarify it then package it and we can use it for future purpose so that's in a sense lactic acid biosynthesis and i hope that's helpful thank you